Good morning, everybody. So this is uh, Dwayne Lulu with Spots and Dots. Normally I'm doing a fishing video, but today I got a reel that just sounds absolutely terrible when I cast it. And I think it's the bearings. I ordered some new bearings for it. And it's actually for, it's one of my uh, Shimano Corrado DC 151 XGs. Shimano SLX. Y'all can see that. And then it's the 151. And it's an 8.2 speed. So here's my bearings I got right here. They're, they come from uh, high speed bearings. And I'll show y'all the website here in just a second. Here's all the tools I got. This is my kit that I use for cleaning my reels. Just some of the stuff. Got some Lose Hyperspeed bearing lubricant and some pin grease just to kind of go over my gears and stuff like that and actually help make things stick that won't go into place and stay. Dab a little bit of that grease on it. But anyways, this thing sounds terrible. It doesn't cast as good as it should, and it certainly isn't spinning as good as it should, as you can see. So, I think it's the bearings. I'm going to replace it, with, like I said, with these really high-speed bearings. We're going to see how it does. And uh, if this is the first time y'all seeing this, seeing me, rather, um, I do a lot of fishing videos, so... If you like this video, that's awesome. I appreciate it, you know, and you subscribe. But just know that most of my videos are fishing videos. I do lots and lots of fishing. Um, speckled trout, redfish. Uh, sometimes I go bass fishing. Sometimes I go snapper fishing. Sometimes I go after cobia and triple tail. Not very often for cobia, triple tail, and snapper, but every once in a while I do. So that's a little bit about me. And if you're you're uh if you're watching this because of the reel just know that i do a lot of saltwater fishing so if you like that hit that subscribe button and watch some of the videos so let's get into uh opening this reel up and replacing these bearings all right so you can see right here there's all the bearings i got them out two of them are the same size right that one and that one those are actually the two easiest to replace and they are the ones that directly go in line with your spool one is uh now i'm not a professional when it comes to cleaning reels and all that but i can do it myself and when i say i'm not a professional i don't know all the proper names of everything i would actually have to stop look at schematics and get all that but where you set your set your line at your drag not your drag but your uh your casting i, I can't even think of the right word y'all know what it is if y'all are actually watching this so you're going to take that cap off and there's a bearing in there and on the opposite side of the reel there's a little switch flip that switch right here and you can wiggle this whole side off there's no screws you can just wiggle it off so i got to put the camera down and i'll do that and those two bearings are in there and they're the easiest ones to replace all right so here's the little switch this is locked in like this unlock it just give it a little twist there and pull it out and you pull your spool out i got that taped off so my line don't come flying everywhere i'm going to get to this bearing you don't have to but it makes it a lot easier just to go ahead and take off your uh reel right here your i know the whole thing is called a reel but so we're going to take that off one screw locks this down if you're not good at remembering things guys take pictures always 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 take pictures this is a little plastic piece that holds this nut in place these nuts this one and the one that's inside of here they are backwards thread so you turn it the opposite direction this is going to be righty loosey lefty tighty is the opposite 
All right, now take this off. If you're not going into a deep clean of your reel and you're just replacing these, don't worry about taking all this off. Underneath here, there's a small little bitty tiny piece that you do not want to lose. It makes little clicks. See it right there? It's already popped out. You want that inside there. And you remember when I was telling you about the grease? That right there would be a perfect spot to put just a tiny bit of grease in there and make that hold. That goes in that little hole. And the only reason I showed you because I don't want you taking this, throwing it down and throwing it somewhere, right? See this side is smooth. This side has got the little bumps. The little bumps go up against here. And that's when you hear the little, little clicks when you tighten or loosen your drag. So that's how that goes. You just take everything off in order. We're going to leave this on for now. But we will have to get inside the reel in a little bit. Taking this off. A little bit of, like there's almost a little bit too much oil in there. I don't know, I could have over oiled it, which is not good. There's a retaining spring in there. Hold your thumb over that while you dig it out because it's spring, springy and it will pop and go flying. So you got that out, lay it down and then you can dig this out or you can come in and push it out from this side. Whatever works best for you. There we go. And that's out. And I'm going to clean this out real good. And we're going to replace one of the little bearings in there. And that'll be one down. There's my bearing. I got it set up. You do not want to put too much, guys. A couple of drops. That's it. Got your little retainer. I said hold your thumb over that dude. Cause it will go flying all right here we go so i cleaned it out real good in there and i cleaned the inside of this cap out real good as well now replacing your cap when you put it back on there just get the cap on and leave it right there because later on when you go to put this back on and lock this back on it won't lock if this thing is tightened down too much so just put it on there and get it to where it's not going to fall off for now next is your little side piece right here this one takes a little bit more digging into you got three screws these two are the same this one's a little different this is where your computer is for the braking system I need to go to a smaller and that's what the DC stands for a uh, disk computer I think something like that now this one you got to be careful with it's got some flat washers underneath this when we get it start to take it off and if you do it right, this won't come out. And it's not difficult to get it back, but it's a lot easier if you just don't move it out of place. So let that stay in place. 
we got this off all right now here's these little flat washers that go all the way around this is another area where you can see how it's shiny i got a little bit of that grease on there to hold them in place all right you got a retainer right here i'm gonna push that retainer out there's a little flat washer whatever you want to call them and then there's your then there's a little rubber deal right there you can see how it's got slots in it that lines up with your with this right here those slots so this can slide through so when you put it back you got to make sure that lines up then your bearing right here so I'm gonna go ahead and clean all these up a little bit put this bearing back in there this new one drop a couple of drops in it and we'll put it all back together all right guys like I said a couple of drops that's all it takes and there's also a little washer down in there as well guys as a matter of fact, I need to make sure it didn't come off of, come out with my um bearing here. So they will, it will do that. It's a just a little silver washer, and it may still be in there. Yeah, see it moving? Yep, it's in there. So when you take that bearing out, make sure that washer is not st stuck to it before you put the new bearing back in. and this can go back in next and then you can put this like I said make sure you line up your little slots there push this back through doesn't matter this doesn't matter which way it, it is this see how I'm moving this little plastic thing around and if you've never opened up your reel before, more than likely these are going to come off. Like I said, I always take a little bit of grease, got my little bit of brush, and, and I'll just dab it around it just so it'll stay. You can see I got a little washer right there as well. See that washer? It's got grease on it. And it actually goes on top of this, but I, I got a little grease on it to keep it, like I said, in place. So anyways, we got all that. This didn't come off and move. Don't have to worry about getting that back together. Just line it back up. And so, another little trick, a little grease on the tip of your screwdriver or hold your screw in if you don't have magnetic it's a dab of grease it doesn't have to be a ton or a lot just enough to hold that screw you can see I'm not tightening them all the way down just enough to Get them in until I get all three in, then I'll tighten them down.
and I'm just going hand tight with it. Nothing crazy. Now, some kits only have two. Mine had five. And these would be the two. Like I told y'all, this is the main. This thing right here is what spins. So that bearing and this bearing are the two that controls the spin for the most part. There are more bearings on the inside that have to do with what you're actually reeling. So, yeah, hit that. This whole thing just sounds terrible. So we're going to open this up and get into replacing these other bearings as well. All right, so now we've got to take off this. nut and again remember righty loosey lefty tidy so opposite threads actually this one yeah righty loosey so yeah they're both opposite threads so we take that off. Now, this is really important. All of these little washers need to come off in the correct order. Now you can always look up your schematics and see where stuff goes, but it doesn't always show you really well which way they go. These two washers, when you got them against each other, you want to have a, a little bit of a gap in them. You see that little bit of a gap? If you get them the wrong way, when you go to tighten everything back down, they don't tighten correctly. Anyways, we got them in there. It's just best to just go ahead and try to keep them together, lay them down, face down, as if it, you're going face down back on here. So, anyways. Alright, we got that off. We got four screws. Two on the inside, two on the outside. Alright, these two on the outside are the same size. Two on the inside... One is short, one is long. You can see this is the shorter one. You can see the space right there. That's that's the amount of space that that screw has to run. And the other screw right here has more space to run. So when you take them off, this is the longer one. This is the shorter one. There you go, and you can see, like you try to put that back on right here, it's just not going to go. You're going to have some screw sticking out, so this is ready to come off. I'm going to clean some of that up. That looks like some salt right there, salt sand. It is, it's gritty, so I'm going to get in there and do some cleaning as well. Take this off, this whole piece, and again, all this goes back the same way this has got several pieces in it, guys. You got this flat piece, which will go first. There's a washer underneath there, right here it is. This whole big piece is one piece. Then you got a piece sitting inside of here. This is a whole nother piece, and it's got a washer type deal sitting inside of that so just know that this is kind of coned this silver piece is coned just remember how it comes off and goes back in remember it but uh i'm going to take all that and clean it separately and get it back together and our bearings all right, so we got three bearings left. We got a bearing here. We got a bearing under here. 
and I'll be honest with you, just I think I'm gonna have to find out where that last bearing is at, guys. So I'll get back with you on that one. All right, so we're gonna get to this bearing right here. All right, when we take this off, the bearing that's under there has actually got a little rod that holds it in, and it's a pain to get it off. Very difficult. It's like a, like, almost like a punch you would need to get it off or something like that. And tap it through. So, oh no, this one's got a retainer. All right, I know one of them somewhere has got like a, like a little rod. So this one's just got like a retaining E-clip. E so I will just use a flat head, pop it off. And be careful because it will go flying. Do your best to keep it from going flying. There we go. So there goes that. And that is this one. I haven't cleaned, I have not cleaned everything out yet, so, but we will. I will do that for sure. This is the same either way. So that's not, don't get flustered about that if it comes off. I'm going to put this on here and I'm put my E clip back on there and I'm going to oil it when I'm ready to put it back on. For now, I'm leaving it off. All right, guys. So I know where that extra bearing goes it goes on your worm gear the reason i didn't know where it went is because i've cleaned this reel a lot of times and as of right now there's not a bearing in it it's like a uh, plastic uh bushing that they have in there instead of a bearing that's how it comes but if you buy this set it actually gives you a bearing to put in it so we're going to get to that in a minute but uh we're going to get to this bearing down here which is this one now this is where you really, if you're not good at remembering how things goes, take a picture. All right, guys, this whole piece comes up, right? And your springs are probably gonna come off. Don't freak out, take a picture. If you don't take a picture, just remember when you put it back together. You see this, see how it's got that divot in there the divot goes down just remember that the big divot the big divot goes down when you put it back together all right very important all right now this whole mechanism has to do with when you click to cast all right so when you take there's two screws right here we got to get and if you cannot disturb all this, you'll be in great shape. If you do, it's a pain in the butt to get back together, but it can it can be done. And I've, I've completely tore this whole reel completely down a few times. And anyways, these are kind of long. And they actually got Loctite on them, on the threads. I don't, I don't, I personally don't put Loctite back on them. You'll, when I get them off, you'll see they got some blue on the threads down there. But, so anyways, this whole tab lifts up. You see that? Little washer goes on top of that bearing. I mean, that thing is frail, so be careful. This comes up. see the there's the blue in them I was telling you about anyways all right now this comes out and like I said just please be be gentle and careful come to the other side just push it don't beat it and bang it or are you gonna upset 
that whole other area and you don't want to do that there we go we got her out I'm gonna clean this out and put that bearing back in there so what I'm doing to clean it out this has got me a rag I run it through there get it tight and just gently pull it back out it cleans all that out in there all right Got my bearing a couple of drops give it a turn go all right so I haven't cleaned all this up like I said so I'm gonna go ahead and do all that um I'm just gonna take a rag or something and just wipe it down I got a toothbrush that I use sometimes you know I take that and get what I can with the heavy stuff uh, same thing I'm gonna get it in here I don't I'm, I won't say I don't um you can use warm soap and water but if you use warm soap and water, I would take out all your bearings. I don't, I try not to put my bearings in water. In fact, I put them in like uh, something that eats away grease and solvent, not like degreaser, but like kerosene, gasoline, something like that, right? And this is what I soak them in, Corrosion X, when I'm done. Got an old bottle, pill bottle, I spray it in there. And there's two different kinds of these. There's a bluish green, and there's a red one. Do not get the bluish green to do this. Get this red one. The bluish green one is real thick. This is like this. And I'll take and I'll drop my um, bearings in there. Now these are for the old ones. You know, this is what I would do with them after I've cleaned them in like gas or something, all right? I, I wouldn't just do it just to do it. But if I've cleaned them in gas or something, I drop them in there and I let them soak and I take them out and I lay them down and I let them drain real well as well. So that's what I do with that. All right, so putting it back together, take these, you see the two holes, two holes goes over these two holes. Gotta put your washer back in there. hand tight you don't want to strip anything guys all right now remember big dip it down it goes in there and this isn't really we're not ready to go back together yet so I, honestly you don't have to put this on there yet but i'm just showing you how that goes because i still got to get to uh this one right here so in order to get to that one all this stuff's gonna fall out again anyway so we'll leave it out the way but i was just showing you how to put it back in there all this is back together that's good so this is your worm gear this is what guides your line left and right and you can see two eclips one right here one on the other side and these are these will go flying as well. Be careful. This pops up. You can see the plastic. So if you're not planning on taking this whole worm gear out, you can actually leave that one in. But uh may be difficult to get this out yeah 
so we're going to have to take this one off. And this one is smaller, the E-clip. And there's a washer behind the E-clip. But that's it. It's just a washer. So you have a washer fail. My E-clip is right there. And now this will slide out. And we got our little plastic washer. And we replace it with the bearing. I say washer. It's not a washer. They call them a... Um, I don't know. I told you I don't know all the proper names and stuff. I can just put it back together and take it apart if I need to. <laughs> All right. This is a little tricky. <clears throat> All right, so we got our washer. We got our E-clip. Now, putting this E-clip back on, I would suggest using... Uh, needle nose pliers small ones if you got them like even smaller than the ones I got right here I'm going to show you why you cannot just put this e-clip back on alright there are little grooves in this worm gear uh, you probably can't see them with this GoPro but if you got good eyes, I'm wearing glasses, you can see the little groove is towards the top. And that's the only place this is going to go back on, is in those little grooves. You will always hear a snap. All your eclipse, make sure you hear that snap. Alright, this has got a little flat right there make sure that washer is down in there and honestly with this I don't know if it's going to go in there because that washer actually goes deeper so this may not work this may be for I may would have to actually get a separate uh, nope, okay, there you go. So there it is. So push up on this end. So there we go. We're going to push up on this end. And you can see that gives us enough to get this E-clip back on there. And that groove is all that, that groove is just barely sticking out. So it should go. But be careful because you don't want it to go flying. All right, so there we go. We got that back on there. All right, so we've cleaned this up pretty good. Make sure you don't have excess oil in there. I like to take a little bit of my grease. Nowhere near this much that's on there. I just put it in there to get it out the way I stabbed it in there. But I like to take that and just give it a little light dusting around all this and on my gears. You know, not that not the bearings, but gears and just over all this other stuff, which I've already done. So. That's what I do with my grease. But where your bearings are and stuff, you don't want grease because grease is sticky and that is going to slow your bearings down. That's why you use oil. All right, I'm going to put this back in. And that is these two small screws. And this will be your a good grease trick that I showed y'all earlier area just going just barely snug with it I'm not tightening it down yet just so I can move this side if I need to
Yeah. I've already showed you how to put this one here. Alright, so I'm putting all these back on. I put a little bit of grease on them. I cleaned them real good. You see that square? And that goes over this. Let's make sure it goes all the way down. There we go. So there's a little square spot for it to go all the way down. Next is this black washer. A little bit of grease on it. Not, not a lot. Spread it around. That goes down. This. A little grease on here. This goes flat surface down. The opening spot up. All the way down. Next is your washer here. A little grease, not get too much. All the way down inside of there. And remember, this has a concave. The cone, if you pay attention to it, the cone goes up. Some grease on here. I would put this on now instead of putting this on and then trying to put it in there. Put a little grease on here. And this is for your anti-reverse. This, and you see the two little slots, it goes into those two little slots. And that's why I put it in now <clears throat> because when you put this on, it is hard to try to line that up or it's harder. It's just easier to put it on now. Your anti-reverse is inside there. Um, it's up to you if you want to clean it or not. You can clean it. But these are like needle bearings, and they come out really easy. So if they start coming out, put your little light grease on there, clean them up. But I'm going to clean this up a little bit and put it back together. All right, as I said, this is your anti-reverse, guys. So if this comes out, you better make sure you put it back in the exact same way. So if you decide you're going to take it out, make sure you know how you take it out because it's got to go back in the exact way. Because if not, it, it's anti-reverse is what it is. You won't be able to reel the correct way. So we got all this back. I am going to go ahead and drop this in right here. It makes it easier. When lining up, take that. I'm going to put this back on, on this side. And lock it. Alright, so now we got that. Sticking up all this is in place. Put this. It just it just makes it line up. That will go inside there. These springs will go where they need to go. It just makes it easier if you put that spool back in. But go slowly. You're gonna feel this little spot. You're gonna feel it hang up on it a little bit on that anti-reverse. Just wiggle it. And it'll drop down in there. There we go. Remember your two outside screws are the same length. Get them in there just to hold it. two inside screws. Remember a short one, a long one. Your long one's going to go down here. And 
she's been a lot better. A lot, lot better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Remember I told you about this when you took it off, you put it back on the same way. Drop them on there. Now some of these actually have another washer on them also. It, it mine never has, so it's not I didn't lose one or anything like that. It just I guess when they put them together, just some things are different. All right, so you got them two on there. And when you put this, oh, there's one right there. There it is. It was stuck to the bottom of that. I just didn't see it. All right, so make sure that groove right there is facing up. That's what your spring is going to sit in. Lefty tighty. So opposite. This is, I wouldn't say tricky, but you got to hold this and tighten it. You want to get it fairly snug. This one goes pretty snug. Almost to where you can't turn it. About like that. You can see that's still... Still plenty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okie dokie. Now next is your spring. Whoop. All right. And this. You see the little groove? I mean, this is actually, I mean, there's no denying which way this goes. But you want to make sure you get it all the way on there. There's a catch. There it is. There you go. Now we're good. You're going to push it all the way down on there. Do you remember about the little pointy thingy, thingy I told you about in there? Make sure that's in there and it's where it needs to be. You got to hold this down because it's spring loaded. Hold it down. Lefty loosey, lefty tighty rather. All right, so this thing can be very difficult to get on there. It cross threads really easy because you're trying to hold it down. So if you can't tighten it with your fingers a pretty good bit, then you're probably not on there correctly. And just looking at this thing, it looks crooked right now. And it is, so it's, it's cross threaded right now. You can tighten it hand tight a pretty good bit if when it goes on correctly. It'll stop before you get down to the bottom if it's cross threaded. Y'all know y'all know what that is. So now you can actually hold hold this and then tighten it. Oh yeah, feel much better. All right, now you got it. Got it on there good, and put your little retaining deal back on there. Okay. There we go. All right, guys. Well, here we go. Let's see how it sounds and feels and. All that goodness. Yeah. That's a lot better. Smooth. I will say this. You hear a lot of talk about these bearings giving you more casting distance. 
Well, to be honest, I don't see that. That's about as far as I normally cast with the original bearings. So I'm not getting any more distance out of them, but she definitely sounds better, feels better than previously. Now, the true test is, you know, how long are they gonna last and whatnot? Because I got a few of these reels. So what you got is your, you got your XG, you got your HGs, uh, and I think uh, something else. And what that is, is the difference in your, your gear ratios. So I got a six something, a seven something, and I got an eight two. It's just your gears, how fast your retrieve is. So it's a very minimal difference in most of the parts. I think just the gears, one's gonna have more teeth than the other is what I'm gonna assume on that. So uh, yeah, there you go. All right, guys, appreciate y'all watching.